Now, let's just go back to this guy, right? Because this is my algebraic definition. I'm uh, just working out two moduli, right? I can do two moduli. I just need to know what's the real part, what's the imaginary part, okay? Um, Z, Z is any point I'm saying on this line. It's the, that's the locus that's being transferred. <coughs> so for example, bless you. here's a Z that I'm saying satisfies this, um, this property up here. Uh, every Z is in the form X plus IY, right? Where X and Y are my variables. So I'm just going to pop X plus IY by definition up into the locus that I've been provided, the equation of the locus. So let's go over here. This is going to be the absolute value of, or the modulus of, x, whoops, sorry, x plus i, y minus 2y, x plus i, y plus 1, take away i. Okay, now when you want to work out the modulus of a complex number, right, we know that the modulus is the square root of, now just watch out, right, usually we would say um, if, if z equals x plus i y, right? Then mod z is the square root of. We're using Pythagoras, aren't we? So this will be x squared plus y squared. Okay, that's fine. Okay. However, you can see that saying this is kind of a bit confusing here because the numbers I'm interested in are not just x plus i y anymore. They're x plus i y and some other stuff in there. So I'm going to suggest to you maybe a clearer way of saying this is to say, what is x? It's the, <coughs> it's the real component of z, right? <coughs> That's what I'm really squaring. And the y, of course, is not just y. There's a y. But that's not really what. I want the imaginary part. However much imaginary stuff is there, that's the whole imaginary component. You can see this is rather more awkward to write, but it's more accurate and it helps you not get confused here, right? Because when you look at this, you're like, okay, well, what's the real part? Luckily, it's just there, it's still x. But what's the imaginary part? It's more than just the y, isn't it? So to make it obvious, I'll say plus i, <coughs> excuse me, and I'll gather all of the um, parts which have imaginary components. Namely, what have I got left when I factor it out? y minus 2. That's the thing that I'm going to be squaring, okay? On the uh, right-hand side, I've got a few more terms flying around, right? How many real parts do I have on that right-hand side complex number? I've got x plus 1. I'm going to chuck them in brackets to, um, to group them as the real component. Then I say, well, the rest of it must be imaginary. What's left? I've got a y. Minus one. Take away 1. Very good. Okay. So that is now what I'm trying to work out. That I can work out the modulus of. Now I can use this. Okay, so I'm going to say, by definition, this is the square root of that guy. There's the real part being squared and the imaginary part being squared. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, right? There's the real part, square it. And there's the imaginary part, square that as well. Okay, I'll give you a second to crunch through the numbers and um, work out all the algebra. Let you get a bit of a head start. By the position of what? The position of the complex number. What complex number? The, no, the right hand side. This? Yeah. You know how we plotted the one, minus 1 plus i? Why aren't we using the minus 1 plus i instead of um, the original? Oh, oh, okay, I, I see what you mean, right? Um, the reason why I put it in this form is so that I can know, like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. However, like I, there's no real point to put it in this minus, like this double negative form, except to see where it is. Like, where's the point I'm interested in? When you go to here, like okay, if you wanted to, you could make it minus minus one plus i, but then you're just going to have to expand it back to separate out your real and imaginary terms. So you gain nothing, right? So it's a little bit like um, you know, if I told you there's the equation of a circle, I said it was something like this. Um, Okay, so here's, here's the equation of a circle, right? I know it's going to be the equation of a circle because I can complete the square of the x terms. 
I can complete the square of the y terms, and I'll get some number over there on the right hand side, which is my radius squared. Okay? Now, why do I rearrange that with the whole completing the square business? Okay? The only reason why I would do that <coughs> is so that I can work out where the center is, right? And therefore, by extension, the radius. Okay? So it's, it's in order to read the geometric features to understand the locus better. But if the question was just, okay, I know, I know x equals 0. I just want to find the y in the sense of this thing. Okay? I mean, I can rearrange it, but why bother? I can just put x equals 0 straight into that guy, right? There's no advantage. It's, no, it's not quicker to complete the square, get it into a circle radius form, and then say, OK, now I'll let x equals 0. I mean, you can, but why, why bother? Not just say 0 and 0. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. kind of awkward but we're gonna do it anyway so okay so Rafa you does that make sense like I mean there's nothing wrong with doing this and going ahead and taking it on the right hand side but I can guarantee you you'll still get this and you'll just have added an extra line or, or two so. all right how did you go did, did you get there did you get what you said is that meant to be which line are you talking about? The one, the equation we figure out. This one here? Is, is, is it meant to be the locus? It's meant to equal to that. All right, let's cut through, shall we? Okay, it is equal to that. It is. All right. Shh. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of all the square roots. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to expand my terms. You can see I'm expecting something obviously linear. Expecting something linear. I'm a little bit thrown off by the fact that I have quadratic terms in there, but that's okay. I'm going to have the same quadratic term on the left and right hand side. So they ought to come out in the wash, right? So <laughs> let's just quickly rehearse it. So I'm going to have x squared plus y squared minus 4y plus 4. Yeah. Uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared. Yeah. Does that check out? Okay. So as you can see, because I've expanded easily, uh, y squared's cancel, x squared's cancel. What do you get left with? Mm. If I um, if I get if I add two y to both sides, I'll be left with minus two y there. Okay. I will subtract four from both sides, which gives me two x take away two, and then I can divide everything through, uh, which leaves me with this, just like I was expecting. Okay. So, it's great to be able to do this algebraically, and sometimes you must do it algebraically, as you've, as you've seen some of the examples before. It's like, I don't know what that geometric means, and I will show you more examples of that. But when you can't think about geometrically, isn't it powerful to be able to say, that's exactly what I was expecting? Okay, it's really, really useful.